What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. VidCon, Aubergine Man, Leo Lionheart 5DK57, 42999. I'm not saying it. You can read it yourself. Shad Church, Alfonso Romero, Jacob Bird, Hawa Muaza, Yadi, Jimena, Ratchet Akarui, Kohav0310, Tokusa, D. Witt, Corey Costello, Sean McLaughlin, Jack, Lorenzo Baxter, Clinton Brown, O'Malley Caboose 5, Dinosaur, Allison Rathbone, Jason Cantu, Acolyte, Michael Pedigo, Marvinator HD, Godfather Plays, Moisa Smelina, Manut D02, Damn Is It, Tommy, and I would also like to thank our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, and Bevan Brummett. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, feel free to click the Join button, which is right beside the Subscribe button right below the video. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. You didn't get a yellow out of that! <laughs> no! I, I, what, why would I lie about that? Why?! Oh, come on. Oh, it's even worse for Wasabi. No. Oh, my God. Will he hit 20? You know what? No. I'm not playing that one. Fuck you, Al Pudding. Rookie of the year, 2020. Let's go. No. No! No! Nick, do you remember the movie The Santa Claus from, like, back in the 90s? Yep. Uh, I used to watch it, uh, like, for at least a few Christmases in a row as a kid. Yeah. I remember watching I remember watching it in theaters. I remember going there with my parents and my sister, and we all watched it, and we had a blast. It was a good movie. I think I was, like, six years old when it came out. Jesus. Yeah. But The Santa Claus is... Uh, it, it's a very interesting film because, you know, it it looks at Santa as though, the Santa Claus uh, mythos, as though there's, like, a legally binding thing with it. And I like that. I, I It's literally a clause. One of my Facebook friends actually pointed something out about it the other day. Um, she, she was like, so he... Uh, accidentally like causes santa to die right yes and then he ends up having to be santa claus in his place but santa claus apparently had a mrs claus before correct theoretically no. well that's the thing we so don't he was know. saying like part of the thing with the sequel was that he had to go well, find a mrs claus that's like, the that's the thing you see we are not a hundred percent on that and plus i don't really a hundred percent count the sequels I mean, yeah. for me, I think the the first Santa Claus movie stands out so good. The second one has some funny stuff in it, but you can tell that they're treading water. And then when the third yeah. one came out, I'm just like, yeah. nope. It's obviously nope. meant to be a lighthearted comedy film, but basically her point was just like, so what happened to the old Mrs. Claus? And like, if they had a kid or whatever, like, were they just like kicked out of the North Pole? Like, that's you know, that's make the way whole for thing. Him and the new yeah, Mrs. Yeah, Claus. Meant, <laughs> you see, once you start throwing sequels in for no reason, other than the fact that it's like, oh, this movie made us a bunch of money like eight years ago. Let's make another one. Yeah, you like, either make the decision to pretty much disregard all lore and fuck it all up, or try and keep consistent and actually have a consistent lore and in which case with light art of comedy usually they just disregard it yeah just, which the whole thing with so uh, just go with it whatever yeah the whole thing with the Santa Claus though was that for the time it was actually really funny because Tim Allen was sort of on top of the world because of Home Improvement which you know it, yeah, which, really uh, really funny show yeah I caught it a lot as a kid and usually liked it when I saw uh? it oh I saw it his neighbor was funny like the never show in his face was yeah. Wilson yeah. Wilson's name? yeah, yeah, Wilson, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, yeah, Wilson never showed his face. He's always like, "Hey, Tim, how's it going?" Like, you know, I, like, so how's it going, your neighbor? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I always thought it was yeah. cool how, like, just his eyes could re like tell you all his expressions and stuff. Yeah, it. There's that, and plus, there's also just the overall family dilemmas that he comes across with his with his three kids or three sons, and also, uh, also, you know, his wife and everything. And my whole thing about home improvement is that I, you know, I didn't understand a lot of it that was going on when I was a kid. I thought a lot of it was funny. But then watching it again, now that I'm older, I'm just like, 
huh, okay, I see what they're going with now. But the Santa Claus, when it came out, um, I remembered, uh, I remembered uh, this part in particular. The hot cocoa that this little elf uh, gave to Tim Allen. And I always imagined in my head what that would taste like. It's just like when I watched Hook. Uh, you remember the Peter Pan movie with Robin Williams? Mm-hmm. Hook. You remember like the, the pies that they throw at each other during the food fight? I always wondered what those tasted like, and Babish For made some those. reason, I never had those thoughts as a kid, but I was a picky kid that didn't really... I didn't have, like, a love of food until I got into, like, my probably, I would say, late teens, early 20s. And at that point, I started trying more things, and I started being like, holy shit, this is delicious to certain things. Yeah. Um, the first thing I actually remember, though, um, and it was probably in middle school where I actually started to wonder about how things would taste in fantasy settings was the Turkish delight from Chronicles, Chronicles of, Narnia. of Narnia. Yeah. I and remember the that. second thing I remember shortly after that was like the, all of the stuff from Harry Potter, like the butter beer mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I was always like, well, I wonder what that tastes like. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah it, there's, and this film for me, when I saw, for me, the hot cocoa thing, I remembered my mom and my dad, they both had their own ways of making hot chocolate, uh, like hot cocoa, hot chocolate, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Um, my mom, she liked to use the uh, packets, but she always uh, used a little bit of milk in it. Whereas my dad, microwave like, m- like microwave like a full glass of milk and then added the, added the cocoa mix. And, gotta be honest, perf- I prefer my dad's way, but my mom, my mom... My mom made a mean cup of cocoa back in the day. I'm excited to see Bobbish's way because I'm sure he's gonna go. Oh, he's gonna go ape on yeah, this. Dude. Look, whole look chef, at all whole this on chef the table. Mode, yeah, like, like, look at all that. He's got like a candy shop ready to put in the cocoa. Like, yeah, it's gonna be good. Stuff. Like, I see. Like, I think um, these are like different versions of cocoa up here, yeah. and these are like dark. He's probably uh, gonna talk about the cocoa like powder, chocolates. or you can use like you can melt chocolate. And, yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to see what he's gonna. Well. Might as well get to it. So, come up with for this. so here we go. Hmm. Hmm. It's good. This is really good. <laughs> not too hot. Extra chocolate. Shake it, not stir. Hey, what's up, guys? I Welcome forgot back. about the Bond joke. <laughs> I forgot about that. From the Santa Claus. A recipe 1,200 years in the making, so the least that I can do is spend a long weekend on it. So here I have a collection of different types of chocolate and cocoa powders, both of which we're going to utilize in making our hot cocoa. Technically, it's not hot cocoa if there's chocolate solids in it, but this is what's going to make it extra chocolatey and velvety and rich. But our bread and butter is going to be the cocoa powder. This is where it really pays off to mix and match your flavors. I've got three different different kinds of cocoa powder here. Some are earthy and woody and some are light and fruity. Before we make our master blend of these chocolates, we first have to come up with the best way to integrate them into the beverage. And our kitchen producer, Kendall, taught me an amazing trick where we add a couple tablespoons of heavy cream directly to our cocoa powders and sugars, making a paste. This prevents the dreaded cocoa powder lumps and is how you should prepare your hot cocoa from now until the end of time. Next up, we gotta talk liquids, and generally I like to go with a 50-50 mix of milk and heavy cream. I've got one cup of each here that I just half and half saucepan and over medium uh, maybe I'm overthinking it to not quite a simmer not only did Judy say that the hot cocoa was not too hot but bringing milk to a boil can scald it changing its consistency and flavor once we've reached about 190 degrees Fahrenheit we're gonna kill the heat and add four ounces of bittersweet chocolate and our cocoa paste which is three tablespoons each cocoa powder and sugar tiny whisk together with a tablespoon or two of oh, cream tiny whisk nice. until everybody I want to do this so lunches, bad now I do too kosher salt and optionally you can add a teaspoon each oh. Uh, extract and instant espresso powder, both of which espresso? will serve to enhance okay. the yeah. flavor. Once I'm always down for some All there's left to do is serve and enjoy this rich, decadent mug of American-style hot chocolate. And don't get me wrong, this is very, very, very good, but it's not I worked on it for 1,200 years good. So I decided to explore some <laughs> other methods for making hot chocolate as rich and decadent as possible. Starting with the French, we're combining the same one cup oh, of cream French hot cocoa. We're adding a tablespoon of sugar and a whopping eight ounces of dark chocolate. Chocolate. 
go oh. to eat at You always got to go to European places. countries to get some of the best Which sweets and stuff, it seems like. Rich, well, yeah. Thick, you got to think. Like, they don't always have their sweets as sweet as our sweets, but they have certain hidden gems that just put all of our sweets to shame. This stuff kind of... Sort of, yeah. I, I agree with that. But at the same time, I think... Like German chocolate? Like, oh. Fuck yeah. German chocolate is is delicious. Also, also sweet, um, also Swedish chocolate. Swedish chocolate. Also, I tried it. Really good. English scones. They use are a, they use a little bit of salt in it. It actually gives it its own specific flavor. Yeah, like uh, English scones, in my opinion, are pretty badass. Yeah, English scones are good. Uh, French uh, Swedish fish are also really good too. Yeah. Also, for uh, French uh, chocolate baguette or French chocolate croissants. Oh my god. Yeah. To die for. To die for. Love them. It feels like drinking just a cup of melted chocolate, which you're definitely not going to hear me complain about, but it's not what I imagined when I was a kid and I would watch the Santa Claus so much that I broke the VHS. Now, really, just for cheese and noodles, I'm going to try I didn't the do that. Italian method for hot chocolate, which in addition oh, to Italian. three tablespoons each sugar and cocoa powder, contains one tablespoon of cornstarch in the dry mix. This we're going to add directly into the steaming milk and heavy cream. Put the heat on low this time because we need the cornstarch to be cooked for a couple minutes. This plus four ounces of dark chocolate is going to make for a devastatingly thick, almost pudding-like hot chocolate. And oh. That's because oh, that's oh, what it is. That. It's, it's pretty much pudding. You Don't get me wrong, I like pudding, spoon. but you could dang. Put it in the fridge and it would set up just like chocolate pudding. And drinking it hot out of a cup is, suffice it to say, a bizarre experience. Whoa, I don't think so, Tim. But there's one more ultra <laughs> that I want to try. This one hailing from that was Vienna. Good. This time we're whisking together oh, our three tablespoons of sugar. Going, uh, eight yeah, eight so going Austrian on us. Eight ounces of dark chocolate. Austrian chocolate. Each milk and so German cream, chocolate. Melting that completely over low heat. And then we're kind of going to make a creme patisserie. Really stuff back very closely the related, probably. Slowly ladling the hot mixture. Oh, the okay. Constantly, which is going to temper them and prevent them from scrambling when we add them back to the pot, which we're going to cook over medium-low heat for one to two minutes until we just Damn. start to see a little bubblage. And there you have it, a Viennese-style hot chocolate. Ultra-thick and chocolatey with an added layer of richness from egg yolks. Again, a fun experiment, but not Judy's hot cocoa. The answer there, I think, lies in her James Bond joke, shaken, not stirred. So for our ultimate hot cocoa, really? we're combining three tablespoons of sugar with two tablespoons You're gonna, like, get, like, a, like a, a martini shaker or something? I've never seen him have this many that he's like, nope. Whisk until the like and before time to grab our one. shaker and insulated the thermos with a double Oh, further, I must that's a big, that that's a big boy thermos. Shaking that's... hot liquids causes gases to expand, which could explode and burn your precious, precious skin. So I must advise you not to try this at home. So in addition to the cocoa powder and sugars, I'm going to add two and a half ounces of Calibut dark chocolate wafers. And through a funnel, I'm going to pour in my steaming milk and cream. Then I'm going to seal this guy up tight with both its screw top lids and give it a gentle shake. Just enough to melt the chocolate, dissolve the cocoa powder and sugars, and I hope aerate the heavy cream a little bit, which is going to make it nice and thick. Very carefully unscrew the top to slowly release the pressure, and then there's only one way to serve this. Ah, that consistency a looks a lot better. Mug from the Santa Claus film. <laughs> Whoa! Damn. Silver. It costed two hundred dollars, and I'm going to be drinking all my beverages out of it. <laughs> two hundred dollars for the cup. Understandable. Yeah. Say, I think yeah. It's, it's richer. I'll probably drink all the beverages out of it, but not as well from now on too. The earlier true. iterations. It is not too hot. It is extra chocolatey, and it was shaken, not stirred. Happy holidays, guys. Dang. So there you go. Babish, uh, Babish uh, showing us the secret to Judy's, uh, uh, to Judy's hot, cho- hot cocoa. Yeah. It so, really sucks that, like, the one, like, he basically recommends that you don't try at home. It's like, doll. Oh. Damn. It's like, come on, Babish. Come on, Andrew. We want to, we want to, exper- we want to experiment and have fun making, making food stuffs, too. Uh, I mean, hell, I've been experimenting with how to make the perfect eggs in a nest now for like the last few months, and I think I've hit the nail on the head. I think I've practically got it down pat. My fried chicken, though, still needs a bit of work. Still, like, I know Nick and Chad and Nikki, they've all tried my fried chicken, and they've all, like, like your opinion on it is, like, One of the things you have to remember about me, though, is, like, if it's chicken, I don't give a fuck. Like, it's always going to be good to me because I love chicken. That's fair. So, well, that's mean, kind of the same with me. Like, it, it's very hard to fuck up chicken. You could probably make chicken like good enough that I was just like, "Damn, this is really good chicken." But I'm always gonna be like, "This is pretty good chicken." Like, cause it's chicken, like, yeah, I just fucking love but, chicken. But yeah, reason. just from my like breading and like preparation techniques. I mean, you take yeah, it's it. pretty good. Okay, yeah, 
But, could, I mean, like I said, most chicken always is be pretty better. good to me. <laughs> can always be better. But I, yeah, I've, uh, I remember you actually, I remember, actually, we've talked it's about making a video. My thing I've been video. perfecting for the past forever is scrambled eggs, Gordon Ramsay's oh, instructions-wise. Um, and I've added my own stuff to them off and on, and just, uh, I found out from Ballsy on Discord last night, actually, that creme fraiche is not what I thought it was. Because my mom and some other people like us was like, you know what creme fresh is? They were like, I think it's like sour cream. So I've been using sour cream in the eggs, no, which works creme fine. Fresh is, creme fresh is apparently like cream cheese. Yeah, it's effectively, it's so, it's it's a very more fine whipped version. Yeah, he of said like it was like the kind you would cheese. put in cheesecake. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's. That not, sounds bitching. And now I need to try that. I need to get it, like some whipped cream cheese and try that instead of sour cream. See how that you works. You know, for the longest time, you and I, we've talked about doing like a combo video where I prepare fried chicken and then you do the. Uh, you make it into like a. Was. You make it like tortillas or something? Oh, yeah, I can make quesadillas out of yeah, it. Yeah, so. And quesadillas he, are easy. Like, like a fried that's chicken one thing quesadilla. that like I didn't have to practice much. Like you literally. Like. You can use oil, and the time I did it with oil, I was not quite as big of a fan, so melt butter in a pan, like, you know, and coat the bottom of the pan with butter. Yeah. Lay your tortilla out, put your chicken across one side of it, sprinkle cheese over top of it. If you want to add anything else, you can, but it's not even necessary. Fold it over, drop it in the pan, like a minute and a half, flip it. Like... It's pretty damn good case of the, you can spread yeah. some sour cream on it. That's what I usually do. But like, you don't really have to add a lot of extra stuff for chicken and cheese and a tortilla that's lightly <laughs> toasted, you know, kind of almost fried Yeah, to be pretty damn good. Well, I mean, it, it, I wanted to show off like my, my recipe for fried chicken and let people, let people try it for themselves, see what they think. But I mean, the thing is you like, show usually off your way to make it. Yeah. Usually the chicken in a quesadilla like is it's not grilled. Yeah, it's like grilled or something. It's not fried. So I'm wondering how a fried chicken quesadilla would be. My guess is still probably pretty damn good. Hmm. But like the other thing that you were saying that I probably could make is like a chicken wrap. Like yeah. which that's what I did like uh, with your chicken the one time. For that, I just took flatbread. Like I have these like flatbread things that are kind of like a uh, they're called flat outs. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to eat sandwiches nowadays, but took that, laid three bacon strips on it, and uh, I use, like, the pre-cooked bacon because I'm lazy, and it's a lot faster to just have that. And uh, I put the chicken on it. I threw, um, what was that? I threw cheese on it. And then, There was some other stuff I did to it, but I can't remember yeah, what it is at this point. And then you dropped some of my fried chicken on there. Yeah, yeah, the chicken was on top of the bacon with yeah. cheese. But yeah, I drizzled like some ranch along it and everything. And uh, Well, first I microwaved it and like melted the cheese and heated up the bacon. And I also remember you uh, then, made then two, And then I added actually. the chicken after the microwave because he had just made the chicken and it was still it, warm. So. You, he made two, actually. I remember the yeah. first one you did... You actually like had like a you. I put too it. much extra stuff on the first one. Yeah. Then he did the second one, and he only like made like a valley, uh, like put it in like because the the two slices of chicken in the end, he like put it in the valley of the chi- like where the two chicken uh, strips were, yeah. and then he said that one was much Just better. Like ran a line of ranch down it instead of like ranching over it like I normally would. Yeah. So he he did that to him. That was. Much I think better. I also might have threw some spicy brown mustard on the second one or something. Oh, like that's right. That. Yeah, because so. that's that's Nick's favorite uh, condiment, probably yeah, spicy, Hot, spicy brown, brown mustard. mustard. Balling. Yeah. So we'll probably have to give that a shot. I mean, I don't eat it on everything, but it is my favorite flavor of condiment. Like it just doesn't work with everything, like ranch does. It, yeah. Okay. I I just don't like ranch. I don't like ranch. I don't I like know, mayo. I love ranch. I. I like mayo on certain things too. Mayo, I can't stand. I'm never gonna just ranch. eat a fucking spoonful of mayo. Dude, the, the the smell of ranch almost makes me sick. That's weird. I, and I, I weird as much as I can. I I, I don't know now, why. There dude. was one uh, mishap with ranch before where I didn't like the smell of it at all, and that was uh, I had a World of Darkness book when I was in middle school, and. I believe, I can't remember. I want to say there was someone who was a fucking dickhead. I don't think it was an accidental spill. I'm pretty sure there was a fucking dickhead at lunch that just like took a fucking cup of ranch and like opened my book and fucking when I wasn't looking and just like dumped ranch across my book page and then closed it. 
So, like, it was fucking soaked, like, greasy with ranch afterwards, and, like, the pages were sticking together and stuff, and it smelled really bad after, like, You know, day. someone did that I in... To throw that book away. Someone did that to a kid named Dan- A kid named Danny and had this, uh, big, had this, like, big hit... We had these huge history books. You know, we kept them for two years, because you taught, you taught the first half one year, second half the next year, and basically what someone did was they went right in the middle of it, put, like, two or three ketchup packets in it, and then just like uh, closed it in there, and then they slammed another book down on top of it, and the ketchup just like, like all in it, and then Damien tried to open it up, and those pages were like stuck together, and it ripped it ripped those pages of the book. Yeah, and uh, he had to get a he had to get a new one, and uh, yeah, so they could never like just fuck with your textbooks or something like that. It was always like something you actually gave a shit about whenever people wanted to fuck with your stuff. Yeah, well. They, like bullies, like are intelligent in terms of picking how to like best to fucking get at you. Seems like. Well, for me, the number one thing they always went after was the fact that you know my mom was a teacher, and they always kept agging me on saying, "Dude, your mom's hot. Dude, I'm gonna fuck your mom." I'm like, I wouldn't give a shit about that. Oh well, I I didn't. For I would have been time. like, yeah, yeah, she likes pegging, so you're gonna have to take it up the ass. At, actually, what I told what I told them was, uh, like, I would have just told them something fucked up, so they would have been like, "What the fuck, dude?" And just like shut well, the fuck up. I wasn't that smart. Instead, I was just like, I was just like, I was like, uh, "No thanks." I I mean, I can't speak for her, but as far as I like, I, I forget. I forget like some of the stuff I said, but I was just like, "Yeah, nah, trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. She like she would be not be interested." And just like stuff like that, mostly just like uh, passer, like passerby stuff. But every fucking day, dude, nonstop. That's all they would say, and I'm just like, that's literally every insult they hurled at me. But all right, uh, this was uh, binging with Babish, Judy the Elf's hot cocoa from the Santa Claus. Hopefully, you enjoyed. It. And if you want to see more from uh, the Bab- uh the Babish one himself, feel free to click the channel name in the title of the video which is Babish's Culinary Universe. And if you want to see more from us, you know what to do. You hit that bell to, uh, you hit that subscribe button, you ring that bell to stay notified, and you hit a like that, you hit the like on the video. And I guess until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out.